One of the most important parts of optical flares was creating a powerful, easy to use interface. So here I've applied optical flares to a solid and we can move the light source around and control many of the settings as well as animate them. So here we have the heart of optical flares, the interface. Now, the first thing you'll notice is the large preview window where we can move around the flare, check it out, see what it does. We can also play around with the brightness and the scale, as well as show 4x3 guides. Now, this also pops out, if we click on that, and it becomes a movable window that we can maybe put side by side with the interface. It also gives us a little bit more space in the object stack. But you can also look really closely at some of the detail of these elements. But another great feature is the show background feature. So if we click that, we can actually look at what the background looks like in our design. And the benefit of this is that we can refine our lens flare based on the way it blends with the background. Oftentimes you'll be looking at your lens flare on black and it may look good but when you hit OK it doesn't quite blend right and hopefully this will save you time from opening and closing the option window. Now I can close the pop out and it goes back into the core interface. Now the next thing we're going to take a look at is the object stack and this is where all of the elements of your lens flare are stored. So we have a caustic, we have a glint, a glow, and there's just tons of elements that make up this one particular lens flare. We can click on them and we can then come over here to the object editor and make adjustments to the settings. You can also hide certain elements while you're working and by the way if you hit OK those elements remain hidden so that if you're working on a lens flare and you're not sure if you want to get rid of that or not you don't have to necessarily delete it you can just hide it temporarily. You can also solo the elements so that you can work on them individually as well as delete them if you really want to. Now another cool feature is the visual thumbnails that you'll notice on each of the objects. So here we have the glow and the caustic and the glint and it's great because then you can kind of see what element is what. It really makes it easy to find specific elements and it also updates live if you're to move the light position around. So you can see the caustic is down in the bottom left and if I move my light source down here, the caustic now is in the top right. So a very handy, very cool feature that I knew we had to have from the very beginning. What's really great about optical flares is that it works a lot like After Effects with regards to the user interface controls. So I can click on a number and it opens up an input box where we can change the value with the keyboard. You can also click on a value and drag it left and right to change the setting. So just a quick way to go ahead and make any kind of refinement and adjustment to your settings. But wait, there's more. Just kidding. Well, there is, but I didn't mean to say that. You can also click on the name of an object and rename it. So this makes it great for organizing specific elements and uh, finding the ones that you've just changed. Now, you also notice there's a wing arrow here. And this allows you to sort by type as well as by name. And when you do that, all of the elements go in alphabetical order so that you can look at all of the glow elements at once or look at all of the iris elements. So it's very organized. You can also rearrange the order of the objects. Just click on one, drag it, and it moves to that position. You can also use the mouse wheel to scroll through your objects as well as the settings in the object editor. So this is the basic idea. You click on the objects here, the settings show up in the object editor, you can change them, modify them, and create this masterpiece lens flare. And of course we have a great undo and redo system up to 25 states as you're working. You can undo, redo any of the things that you've changed so that you don't accidentally make a mistake and you know get stuck with something you don't want. One of the key workflow features is the ability to copy and paste settings from one object to the next. So to use the copy paste, just right click on a property, choose copy, go someplace else, right click, and choose paste. And we've set it up so you can't say copy a color and paste it into a number, it's just not available and it even tells you why. Look at that, I didn't even know about that. And another thing is we have this dynamic triggering engine which we're going to talk about a little bit later. But there's a lot of settings here and say instead of copying one of the settings at a time and pasting it, you can actually copy and paste groups. So I can take this entire group, copy it, go to another object, right click on the dynamic triggering and paste all of the settings from there 
into that one. So it really makes it fast, easy, while you're working on these complex lens flares. Now speaking of workflow, optical flares also features tons of keyboard shortcuts. Now I'm not sure all of them offhand, but you can actually use the arrow keys up and down to go between the different objects. You can take an object, duplicate it with the same shortcut as in After Effects, which is Control D, and that duplicates the object. You can also just come over here and hit duplicate to uh, duplicate the object. Now let's take a look at building a simple lens flare. So we'll come over here, click clear all. Are you sure? Yes. So everything gets reset. We can go uncheck the show background. So we'll come over here and click on lens objects. And the object browser slides out. And here we have the 12 core objects that makes up all of our lens flares. So we'll start out with some of the basic elements. We'll add a glow and we can move that around. And we'll come back over here to the lens objects. We'll add a multi iris maybe a spike ball, and maybe a streak. So here's a pretty simple lens flare, and we can go and just you know make a few adjustments to uh, some of the settings, and uh, you know there we go. Now we have this thing called global color. Now if we click on that, we can change all of the colors of all of the objects at once. And you also notice that we have a live color picker, which is something that we had to custom build, so uh, you know, we we're definitely trying to make this as uh, powerful as possible. So I'll just hit OK. And now all of the elements have that same color. But what if I want one of my objects to be a different color? No problem. Just click on one of the objects, change the color source from global to custom, and now we can click on that and change it to whatever we want. We can hit OK. And by the way, here's a quick feature, is if it's on global, if you just click on the color swatch, it automatically switches it from global to custom. So you really don't have any extra steps other than just changing it to whatever you want. One of the other cool features of optical flares is the preset browser. So if we come over here, we click show presets. We have the preset browser. And by the way, the way this works is that this slides out. We just click over here. You can also hit the space bar and that'll come out. And we can just click between objects or presets. And by the way, the objects, we have basic objects, but we also have custom objects. Now what the custom objects are, are the exact same as the basic objects, except the settings have been changed and then saved. So then we can just click on them and it gets added to our lens flare. But what if you make one that you really like, like this spike ball is, uh, you know, just amazing. You know, I've, I've changed the settings and uh, I love it. Well, we can just right click on it, choose save as a custom object. And then that object will become available. Now, if you want to save the entire lens flare, just click Save Preset. And you can give it a name. Select a folder you want to save it to. In this case, we'll just save it to the custom presets. And I'll hit OK. And now it's available. So let's take a look at the preset browser. So we'll click Show Presets. And the preset browser slides out. And we have our folders. And you'll also notice there's a number next to each of the folders. And that just indicates how many presets are in that folder. So we can click on a folder. And now we can see a thumbnail for all of the great presets that are available. And if you've ever worked with a client who really wants to be involved, uh, this is kind of a good way so they can start looking at uh, different lens flares. And you just click on them and they load. And if we hit the space bar, it comes back up the same place that you were just at. And you can just go through and try out the different lens flares. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun, actually. And then we just click the folder back, or we can just use the navigation at the top. We can turn the show background back on while we experiment with some of the different presets. So we can click on them, you know, and just kind of see what they look like in our actual design. And then when you find something that you like, we can just come over here, hit OK. And now that lens flare is back in our main comp where we can animate it and control all of the other settings. So be sure to check out the rest of the great features and we'll see you soon.